Suppose that we deposit $1,000 into a bank account offering 3% interest compounded monthly. How will our money grow? And so the big difference between this and simple interest is this word compounded, that we're compounding our money. Now what that means is that when we earn interest, we're not just going to take it and out of the account and spend it, but we're going to leave it in the account and we're going to earn interest on that interest. So let's start out here by noting that this 3% interest rate is what's called a, an APR, or annual percentage rate annual percentage rate. And so we're not earning 3% each month. We're earning 3% as an annual rate, but we're earning our interest monthly. So what that means is that 3% is going to get divided over the 12 months, and we're going to earn a quarter of a percent, or 0.25% each month. So let's see what happens. So in the first month, so at the end of one month, I'm going to have my original $1,000, and I'm going to have earned 2.5, sorry, 0.25%, so moving the decimal place over to times 0.025. Uh, so I'm going to have earned $2.50 uh, in interest. Now, this expression's kind of messy, so let's go ahead and factor out the 1,000, uh, and that would leave me with 1,000 times 1 plus 0 0.0025, or in other words, 1,000 times 1.0025. So let's see what would happen in the next year. So now I'm earning, oh, by the way, this comes out to $1,002.50 after we add in our $2.50 worth of interest. So in the next year, I'm going to, sorry, next month, I'm going to start with, not with $1,000, but with 1250 and I'm not going to earn interest on just the original 1000 but I'm going to earn interest on the 1250 And so instead of earning $2.50 worth of interest, I'm going to earn about $2.51 worth of interest. Not a huge difference at this point, but but it is different, and we are earning more. Again, we could factor out the, the, so we could factor out the 1,250 here, leaving me with 1,000 times 1 1.0025, and I end up with $1,005 and a penny. So I've earned a little bit more money this time. Notice the general pattern here is that, the next month, so in this case, oh, and I have a typo here. I'm sorry, I'm going to go correct this really fast. That was not 1,000. That was supposed to be 1,250 that we're multiplying by that. Uh, so the amount that we have after each month is the previous amount, right? Because here I started with $1,000. The previous amount times 1.0025. After two months, I have the amount from the year before, sorry, month before, times 1.0025. So after m months, the amount that I'll have will be the amount from the previous month times 1.0025. And that's going to come in handy in a minute. Before we get there, though, let's take, let's expand this out a little bit. Let's imagine that we had calculated a few more months' worth of values. So let's jump out and calculate a whole year's worth of values. And notice here that the interest that we're earning is increasing each month. Because, again, we're earning interest not just on the original $1,000, but because we're earning interest on the interest we've already earned. And so the amount that my balance increases by each month is increasing as well. So next, we're going to look at how to break down and come up with a general equation for compound interest. So we already figured out that we could 
express the our compound interest growth here uh, sort of recursively in the form PM equals PM minus 1 times 1.0025, or in other words, the new month is the previous month times 1.0025. So let's see if we can take that relationship and come up with an explicit form for it. Now, if you've already done growth models, you might know where this is going, but let's go ahead and walk through the steps. So P0 was the initial amount that we start with. After one month, we'd have P0 times 1.0025. After two months, I'd have P1 times 1.0025. But where did P1 come from? P1 came from here, and so I'm going to have P0 times 1.0025 times and another 1.0025. Or in other words, I could simplify that down to P0 times 1.0025 squared. After three months, that would be the previous month times 1.0025. But where did P2 come from? P2 was all of this thing, so this would be P0 times 1.0025 squared. That's P2 times another 1.0025, or in other words, P0 times 1.0025 cubed. And you might be seeing the pattern here that after any number of months, the amount that I'm going to have will be P0 times 1.0025 to the m power, where m is the number of months that have passed. So let's see if we can generalize that now to an general form equation. Now, we really want our equation to involve the initial amount P, R, which was the interest rate, K, which is going to represent the number of compounds in a year. So in this case, we were compounding monthly, and so K was 12. There was 12 compounds in a month. And we want N, which is going to be the number of years. Because working with months is just sort of a little bit more confusing in most cases. So let's see if we can break down what's going on here. So we want to rewrite this equation in terms of years, in terms of n. So we're going to have our initial amount, p0. And then where did this 1.0025 come from? So if we skip back for a second, um, Remember that the 1.0025 was coming from the interest rate of 3% divided by 12 months to figure out the interest per month plus 1 because we were adding on the original amount. So if we go with that idea, then this is going to be 1 plus, this was the interest rate divided by the number of compounding periods in the year. And so this is going to give me the interest per compounding period. So now we need to figure out how to take the number of years and create the number of months. Well, let's think. If I had, let's say, four years, how many months is that? It would be 4 times 12 is 48 months. And so if I wanted to know my balance after four years, I would put in 48 here for the months. So where did this come from? This was the number of years n times 12, the number of compounding periods in a year. And so the n times k here ends up giving me the total number of compounding periods. No matter how you think about it, here is our final equation then. This is our equation for compound interest.